Hello everyone! I'm a physics enthusiast, and when it comes to physics, I like to tackle new topics one step at a time, starting with the very basics and breaking them right down. In this video, I'll be providing some groundwork for the topic of AC electricity, that is, the electricity that comes through your wall sockets. Understanding how it works can seem daunting at first, and it's usually saved for the end of high school physics courses. If we take it one step at a time though, we'll learn to love AC together. So this video is going to introduce you to a mathematical tool that will be extremely useful in your study. It's called a phaser, which is short for phase vector. Essentially, it's a vector that spins inside a circle. Although it looks straightforward, a phaser can hold a lot of information. I'm going to show you what that information is and why it's useful, with just a tiny sprinkling of mathematics. And yes, this video will contain Star Trek references. Not only is it the obvious move, but I've been watching a lot of Star Trek lately, and I've come to appreciate the show as an intelligent yet light-hearted staple of sci-fi. Thanks to the internet, you can learn to enjoy it too. As I said before, the term phaser is a contraction of phase vector. This is what a vector looks like. It's an arrow that is used to represent some real-world quantity, like a force. The length of the arrow represents the magnitude of that force, and its direction represents the direction in which the force is applied. For example, a well-placed punch can deliver more than 3,000 newtons of force to a target. A well-placed kick can deliver almost 10,000, the equivalent of one ton of weight. These two forces can be compared visually using the vectors on screen. A phaser consists of a vector that lives inside a circle. The tail end of the vector is fixed to the center point of the circle, and it rotates around that point. Also, the radius of the circle is the same as the length or magnitude of the vector. The kinds of things we can model with phases are things that oscillate. That means they go back and forth in a repeating cycle. You can draw a phaser to represent the movement of a pendulum, or the signal carrying a radio broadcast, or the power flow in a wall socket as the voltage goes up and down continuously. Allow me to elaborate. Whenever something oscillates, it does so with a certain frequency. A pendulum swings one way and then the other. When it swings back to its starting position, it has completed one cycle. The frequency refers to the number of cycles completed in one second. When we draw a phaser for a system like this, there's one primary rule to keep in mind. A prime directive, if you will. The phaser rotates at a constant speed. It doesn't rev up or slow down. This constant rotation means the phaser has a certain frequency that does not change. It completes a cycle every time it returns to a given point on the circle, and the frequency measures how many times it does this in one second. What this means is that for any system where something is oscillating at a fixed frequency, we can represent it using a phaser we can use it to trace out a precise graph of the system's movement, which will take the form of a sine graph. We can show the movements of multiple things in the system, which allows us to compare them more easily than by using just our eyes. And we can perform mathematical analysis on the system to study properties that are not directly observable, like the impedance of an AC circuit. Those are all great uses, and each one deserves a video on its own. For now, I'll just outline what AC actually is, and the most common application of phases. Electricity is transferred through circuits in one of two forms, either DC or AC. DC stands for direct current. It always flows in the same direction through a wire, for instance from the positive terminal of a battery to the negative terminal. Direct current tends to be used in applications where not much power is needed, including small handheld devices like torches. AC stands for alternating current. 
and this type of electricity is used for larger scale applications. It provides power to toasters, heaters, ovens, fridges, and many more household appliances. The reason we call it alternating current is because it actually changes direction constantly, as a result of being generated by spinning turbines. This change in direction happens a certain number of times each second. It has a certain frequency. That's why phases can be used to model it. Let's consider this phaser for a moment. It represents the voltage delivered to a wall socket in my house. Here in New Zealand, that voltage is set to average 240 volts. Since this is AC electricity, the voltage goes back and forth in a repeating cycle, and it repeats 50 times per second. In physics terms, it oscillates with a frequency of 50 hertz. How does that information translate to the phaser? Well, the magnitude or radius of the phaser will be 240 units representing 240 volts. The phaser will rotate at such a speed that it completes 50 cycles in one second. That's pretty fast. And if we trace the position of the phaser over time, we get a sine graph that shows exactly how the voltage goes up and down each cycle. I realize there are a lot of technical terms in use here, but hopefully the picture will help you understand what is happening. Of course, different countries use different AC voltages, and we can draw new phases to compare the differences. We can also draw phases that represent other variables, like the amount of current delivered to an appliance from a wall socket. Further study in AC circuits will also introduce phases that are offset from each other like this, because the voltage and current in a circuit are offset from each other by special components like capacitors and inductors. That's a bit advanced for this video though, but it will be something for you to look forward to. The point is, there's a lot you can do with phases. I hope you found this video interesting or at least a bit helpful. As I said, it's just a bit of groundwork to help us build up to a more complete understanding of AC electricity. More videos on this topic are on the way, so please consider subscribing to my channel if you don't want to miss out. Thanks very much for watching, or as the Vulcans say, live long and study hard.